keep going? Welcome everyone. I want to introduce Dan. Dan Beischer is a published author, writer, and journalist. A native of Hillsdale County and a graduate of Hillsdale High School, he is a U.S. Marine Corps Vietnam veteran, having served as a combat, combat correspondent. After attending California State University at Fullerton and working in Southern California for two and one half decades, Dan returned to Hillsdale and was employed by Hillsdale College in media relations as a writer and later he was the managing editor of the Hillsdale Daily News before returning to college to work as an assistant to the athletic director. For several years, Dan narrated a historical program titled Tales of the Old Soft Trail on Hillsdale's WCSR radio station, where he also served as a color commentator for high school and college football and basketball games. Dan's recently published book is entitled Faded Memories, Examination and Profiles of Hillsdale County's Pioneer Period. Dan resides on his family, family's Michigan Centennial Farm in Woodbridge Township with his wife, Noelle. Dan has been a part of Vanished Hillsdale from the beginning and has presented historical programs for each of our previous annual gatherings. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to Vanished Hillsdale's sixth anniversary. Now, this popular website was created by Greg um, and it began, as many of you know, with just a few folks and has grown to more than 8,000 participants. And that, that's a remarkable social media success for a uh, story for a town and county the size of Hillsdale. And we've shared photos, stories, and lots of historical facts and tales through Vanished Hillsdale. And our sharing has included important historical information. Greg, please step up here, man. In honor of the sixth anniversary of Vanished Hillsdale, and on behalf of the hundreds of people who have enjoyed and learned from this website, I present Mr. McLogan with this certificate of appreciation, and he deserves the credit for helping all of us remember the history of Hillsdale County so that we might pass on that knowledge to our children and our grandchildren. And this is what we're giving them. Okay. Now, the majority of folks who have spent their lives in Hillsdale County, Michigan, take with them wherever they go a special heritage, a unique culture, and traditions. It's important to remember your own culture and your heritage, and who you are and where you came from. A little knowledge of history is important, but a lot of knowledge about your own little spot on the planet has a lot to do with who you are. And there are several different ways that you can learn more about yourselves and where you live. Of course, Vanished Hillsdale is one way to keep informed. Also, the Mitchell Research Center in Hillsdale is one of the finest repositories of local history anywhere, uh, anywhere actually. Towns and cities much larger than Hillsdale do not have such a facility uh, with dedicated and committed volunteers. And if you've never taken time to visit uh, the, the Mitchell Research Center, I highly recommend that you take that time and see what treasures reside in that old Victorian home given to the residents of Hillsdale by one of the early pioneer settlers, Charles Mitchell and his family. Another method of learning about pioneer history, of course, Here's the plug for my book. <laughs> <laughs> and being naturally curious, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm curious to know how many have actually read Faded Memories. Put, you, put your hands up so I can see. Oh, look there, that's good. All right. Yeah, I brought copies with me if anybody wants to purchase them. I'm going to see my wife. <laughs> Other folks whom I admire and respect for their knowledge of local history are Sally Fallon for her overall knowledge and her commitment to Mrs. Stocks Park and the Poor House, and Dr. Arlen Gilbert for his massive knowledge of the college's history that you can find in his four books that includes his book about the Civil War and the college's contributions to that great conflict. Joanne Miller has done a terrific job, this is Joanne, of updating the Historical Society's webpage with lots of uh, information, and I'd be remiss if I didn't give credit to Carol Lackey, who has a ton of information about houses, 
buildings, cemeteries, and the overall history of the area. And one person who's no longer with us provided me with her lifelong research into our local history. Edith Ash, who passed on some years ago, was better known to many as the Grand Dam of local history. And I consider these folks to be my mentors and the champions of this county's legacy. And Edith's daughter, Liz, who I went to school with, is sitting in the back row there. <laughs> now we begin our journey today. I wrote this, so it's, bear with me. We begin our journey today over country dirt roads, through deep valleys, and past Amish farms abundant with livestock and crops. We find adventure in quaint hamlets, busy villages, and vibrant towns that glow in 19th century reflections. We discover hundreds of lakes, ponds, and cool bubbling creeks and rivers. And this trip takes us down into verdant lowlands and up high hills, where panoramic views heighten our senses. For three-fourths of the year, during the spring, summer, and autumn, southern Michigan's lush green explodes, peppered with colors of striking contrast. And in the winter, nature provides a blanket of fresh white snow. It's an area full of history around every curve and in all of its settlements. You'll experience that history as it collides with the future in a place called Hillsdale County, where you'll discover pure Michigan. <laughs> nice. Speaking of that history, did you know that the names of our villages, hamlets, lakes, and roads are rooted in pioneer history? While traveling throughout the hills and dales, one cannot help but notice the quaint, folksy names of the area's roads, villages, and hamlets. For instance, in how many places around the nation would you find a town named Pioneer in Ohio so close to a hamlet named Frontier? <laughs> the names and nicknames of every hamlet, village, town, and location of Hill in Hillsdale County have roots in the languages spoken by the Pioneer settlers and the colorful monikers for those places so familiar to the descendants and newcomers have survived into the future. Names like Squawfield Road, Hog Creek Road, Half Moon Lake Road, Black Ridge Road, Buckeye Road, Quackenbush Road, we'll just name a few. I'm not in favor of the number method used to uh, name highways and roads in some of the Ohio and Indiana counties, and if you know what I mean, I mean, county road north, south, what, I, I can't even, it makes no sense to me, but because I like the, the names that we have here, I think it's, uh, it just keeps our history alive. And I prefer the solid, historically-based naming method used in Hillsdale County. And I believe the numbering method steals local history because once it's used, the original names and what they represented are lost forever. For example, Squawfield Road was named uh, during the Bobbies era because uh, Chief Bobbies kind of felt like he was a squaw because he couldn't uh, fulfill his duty as a chief. And uh, they were moving him out of the area of federal government, so he felt bad. And that's how Squawfield name got its name. And also because uh, the road passes right through the Indian village down at the corner of Walburn and Squawfield Road, and uh, that's where they grew their pumpkins and their, uh, their uh, corn, maize, and other uh, edibles. A perfect example to demonstrate the origin of place names in Hillsdale County is the name of the hamlet Frontier. How the name Frontier originated involves the Ohio-Michigan Border War. A legend suggests that the men who formed the skirmish lines for the so-called Toledo Strip War in 1835 believed the area to be a true frontier wilderness. One of the militia officers marching through thick stands of maple, oak, cherry, hickory, and walnut came upon a clearing, an island void of trees, and thinking he stood on the line cleared by a presidentially ordered survey crew, he placed three signs at interview, intervals to mark the spots and lettered the signs frontier. He thought he was out on the frontier. When the commanding officer couldn't find one of his company of troops, he sent a runner to look for them. And the runner found the lost troops about five miles north of the area that they were supposed to occupy, sitting rather comfortably between the three frontier signs. That's rather a simple beginning, but the name Frontier was thereafter remembered and we still use it today. Now, one of the most interesting nicknames to evolve through the history of Hillsdale County was that of Henpecked and Frog Eye. 
The residents of Camden and Montgomery provided those descriptive names. The residents of Montgomery, due to an apparent opinion of the marital situation in Camden, called the town Enpact. The Camden residents called Montgomery Village Frog Eye because of a large swamp just east of the settlement where an abundance of croaking frogs welcomed visitors. Pioneer Eason T. Chester first proposed the name Camden after the town of that name in Oneida County, New York. One more example. Whatever actually happened to Chief Bobby's continues to be one of the historical mysteries of Hillsdale County. Bobby's might have been a forgotten man had not the early settler Colonel William Fowler named a lake in his honor. But for the name of a lake near the city of Hillsdale, Michigan, the existence of a Huron Potawatomi chief named Bob Ease might have just faded from memory. Let's see how many historical facts you uh, folks can remember. Uh, I, I, I'm, I guess I won't put any restrictions on this who should participate and who shouldn't. But uh, I call this Dan's Hillsdale Area History Trivia Challenge. And I'll ask the question, and if you know the answer, raise your hand. Don't blurt out the answer. We might have a prize at the end of the challenge, maybe. <laughs> Number one, US-12 was once known as? Chicago Turnpike. That's one answer. The Sauk Trail, that's right, we had two good answers. US-112. US-112, that's right. It had a bunch of different names. That's right. Two. Last Indian tribe to inhabit this area were Potawatomi. It was a bonus point if you said Huron. <laughs> Name of the well-known Indian chief who lived here. Ralph Ease. We, I just I gave that away, didn't I? Name the notorious 1800s outlaw and horse thief who was sometimes called the modern Robin Hood, who lived and operated in this area. Silas Doty. Say it again. Silas Doty. No, Sile Doty. By his own admission, it was Sile, not Silas. There is a Silas Doty uh, who uh, is buried in Reading Cemetery, and a lot of people mix him up with Sile Doty. In, a, in his own uh, autobiography, he, he uh, refers to himself as Sile, and I believe that was his, actually his given name. Name of the so-called war that resulted in Michigan gaining the Upper Peninsula. French-Indian War? No. Toledo Strip War. Toledo Strip War. Toledo Strip War. That's right, the Toledo Strip War. There was a an armed conflict between Michigan and Ohio. Fortunately, no shots were fired. And I think the worst thing that happened was uh, a mule got killed or something and they had to pay reparations for it. Name, name of the two young men who settled along an old Indian trail in the area now known as Hillsdale County Fairgrounds. They are credited as being the fathers of Hillsdale. Anybody want to take a shot at that? Pardon? Howder? No, Adam Howder, actually. That's an intro. You know, we always talk about who was the first settler in the city of Hillsdale. It was Jeremiah Arnold, whose son later became a famous engineer in Chicago. But Jeremiah only stayed there for a short while, and then they moved over into Adams Township. The first permanent settler was Adam Howder, who later became a sheriff and had to chase around old Sile Doty. <laughs> but who it was, anybody want to take another shot at it? Ferris and Cook? Ferris and Cook? That's absolutely correct. John Potter Cook and Chauncey Washington Ferris. They was two young men. They were 20 and 21 years old when they came to, uh, to at first to Jonesville from Cato, New York, where their parents had actually founded that little village. And they uh, eventually moved to where the fairgrounds is today. And, and Wash, uh, Chauncey uh, Ferris was the first postmaster in the city of Hillsdale. Uh, kind of interesting because these two guys continued to develop the town. They're the ones that made the first plat, organized the town. And today they're both buried. They're in their families side by side at uh, Oak Grove Cemetery. 
and they came here in the 1830s and, uh, and lived